Uh, welcome to VTU e section of program. Uh, now, last class uh, we had uh, last session we had discussed about uh, 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 fire pre prevention and terminologies, different terminologies used in fire prevention, and then uh, about life safety, uh, and also we discussed about fire stay cases. So now we'll uh, discuss further on the building construction typologies and what can be done further. Uh, we had discussed in the last session uh, until the fire, uh, fire stay cases, how to provide uh, fire stay cases in different kinds of uh, buildings and uh, if it is for different occupants, how many doors has to be provided, how the entry exits can be provided from all points of the time, all points of the buildings. So now uh, the further topic is uh, fire tower. So fire tower is also very important in high rise buildings especially that is uh, vertical buildings. So fire towers, fire towers are preferred type of escape route for storied buildings that is mixed use or high rise particularly store, uh, vertical buildings. So in high rise buildings with over 8 stories or 24 meter height. If the height of the building measured from the ground level is about 24 meter height, total height of the building is more than 24 meter and or the other way is to check with the stories. If the building is having 8 stories, 8 floors, more than 8 floors, then it is considered as high rise buildings for fire regulations. So at least one required means of egress shall be preferably be a fire tower. So fire tower has to be provided in that particular condition. So that is when you have 8 stories or 24 meter height. So the fire towers shall be constructed of walls with a 2 hour fire rate resistance rating. So these fire towers should have 2 hour fire resistance rating without openings other than exit doorways. It should not have any openings, any sort of windows, any openings other than exit doorways. It can just have doorway, exit door, that is it. With platforms uh, other than exit doorways, with platforms, landings and balconies having the same for, with uh, having the same fire resistant rating. If in case it has a platforms, landings or balconies projected out of that fire tower, then the same those spaces also should have a 2 hour fire resistance rating or whatever is specified or whatever is required for that particular typology. So then we have fire lifts. Fire lifts are, uh, uh, fire lifts minimum capacity is uh, of uh, 8 passengers. It should be if we are providing for fire lifts. Uh, in vertical buildings especially, minimum capacity of that fire lift should be 8 passengers. It should not be 4 or 6 or something like that. So the scale uh, size of the lift will be little bigger. So it is 8 passengers capacity and fully automated. 8 passengers are compulsory minimum, bare minimum. Okay, Fully automated with emergency switch on ground level. It should have an emergency switch in the ground level and completely automated it has to be. Buildings with 15 high, meter height or more shall be provided with fire lifts. As we discussed in this fire tower was also provided for the buildings which is more than 24 meters. but if the buildings are more than 15 meters, say uh, in the normal conditions like uh, what we designed right now, keeping 3 meters as building floor level for residential buildings. So 15 meter, 15 meter contributes to 5 floors. So buildings which has more than 4 floors or 4 and a half floors. So we have, uh, we can provide fire lifts. <coughs> Equipped with it also should these fire lifts should be equipped with proper suitable intercommunication equipment for communication with control room on ground floor. In the ground floor there should be control room for this particular fire lift and also it should have an emergency switch. So uh, it all inside the fire lift 
it should have a proper intercommunication equipment could be phone telecom whatever so it has to be provided in case of fire only fireman shall operate the fire lift if there is a fire only fireman can operate this lift in normal course other persons also can use it yeah so in this uh, uh, in the last uh, sessions few few of the last sessions we have discussed about active fire protections so different ways of doing uh, passive fire protections are like fire doors fire walls fire floors emergency exit lights dampers dampers fire dampers fl flame shields intumescent paint mortar co coating mineral fiber matting protection of master refuge points spray fire proofing so in this we have kind of covered fire walls fire doors so few of few more can be covered in this particular session so fire doors are simply doors with the fire resistance rating so they are simply a door with the fire resisting it's like any other normal uh, um, doors but it has a fire resistance rating used to reduce the spread of fire or smoke between areas to allow safe egress egress is nothing but exit so to allow people to exit easily safely so the fire doors are an integral part of fire safety plan whether you have staircase corridor lobby smoke lobby anything etc but fire doors is like compulsory for you to have in these kind of spaces so it's an integral part of the safety plan some fire doors are designed to be closed at all times these very rare cases this can be used as service doors also but uh, uh, most of the time uh, these fire doors are designed to be closed it has to always be closed at all times so fire do doors in high traffic corridors like schools hospitals libraries offices and large public buildings are designed to stay open under normal circumstances if there are cases like these spaces which are highly occupied occupied so these fire doors can be open in the normal circumstances when there is a case of when there is a fire then it has to be closed these doors are held open by the use of electromagnet hardware so this hardware is been used uh, behind the door or wherever so it controls the opening and closing of the door which is this hardware electromagnetic hardware is wired to the fire alarm system it can be there can be a fire alarm system central fire alarm system can be they provided or a separate entity fire alarm which is connected to these doors can be provided whatever however it is the doors which has electromagnetic hardware to control the opening and closing of the door it should be connected or wired with the fire alarm system so if the power fails or the fire alarm is activated the magnet deenergizes and the door closes on its on so how does this fire alarm and this magnet works is if the power fails if in case of uh, fire in the building inside the building and the power fails the power fails to connect then there is a fire al fire alarm get act activated that time the magnet deenergizes the magnet which is used in the door deenergizes itself and the door closes on its own a second type of fire door is the overhead rolling fire door the overhead rolling fire door is nothing but a rolling shutters so they are found in commercial industrial institutional and even retail settings you can even have uh, rolling shutters or rolled over doors 
and uh, op normal openable doors. So they are used in any commercial space where fire may spread such as counter spaces, service doors and in parking garages. Overhead rolling fire doors are made of steel. These rolling shutters or rolling do fire doors, you call it especially fire doors when it has a rating resistance, fire rating resistance. So uh, these fire rolling doors are made up of steel and are designed to close automatically in the event of an alarm activation. So this is how the door, fire door is uh, indicated. So you have the uh, wall and the frames and the panel, door panel with the handle. This handle is what we were telling uh, where you have uh, uh, handle is what I was telling like you need to have either side of the panel in towards inside and as well as outside. So the door opening. So this is a single leaf door. You can it can be double leaf door, it can be rolling shutter or a rolled over door. So uh, door opening in direction of exit travel. Now it should be like an exit. How you exit outside the building it should be towards that like you open towards the outside and exit easily. So the clear width minimum 850 the width which we were talking about say case and doors is uh, uh, clear width is nothing but when it is opened from the frame from the frame inner surface to the panel inner surface door panel inner surface is a clear width which is minimum 850 mm minimum 850 mm should be the clear width till here 850 mm subject to meeting the requirement of exit capacity if the capacity is to be more then it can be increased but minimum 850 is what has to be maintained provision of space for door knob and closer then the rest of the space should be provided uh, with uh, door knob and closer. So it should also have a uh, knob to space to be provide uh, space to provide door knobs and closer. So we see here this is fire door two ways and we see the handle here handle and a opening like this right and uh, we see the mechanism there is a stopper here which is connected or wired to the fire alarm system. This is one example of fire rolling door that is rolling shutter which is made up of steel. So this is the normal way this can be adapted what all elements the fire door should have is it should have a vision panel vision panel that means see through from both the side people should be able to see through what is happening. So vision panel is very essential even in rolling shutters it can be provided even in this particular door you can see vision panel here and here. So vision panel and uh, exit door with vision panel minimum size of that vision, uh, vision, vision panel should be 150 minimum wide width and the height of the vision panel should be 1200 mm from the floor level or finished floor level. So that is very important and exit fire ex uh, exit has to be written in red color on top of the door. So this is how you can see that uh, uh, normal fire doors are made up of so uh, this frame, door frame, if you see the section of the door frame is like this. So what happens in that is nothing but you have an intumescent strip and cold smoke seal to resist the passage of smoke and fire. So there is always a little gap between the wall and the frame. Okay. So through that gap or space easily smoke can enter. So to avoid that intumescent 
strips or paints uh, can be used. So I will be discussing about intermittent paints in the further slides. So those paints or strips can be used to avoid the entering of the smoke or fire in the small thin gaps. Then it should have a door handles and locks should be tested, locks should be tested easily as per a part of a door set. Vision panel as I already discussed which is 1200 mm from the floor level till the bottom of the vision panel and the width of the vision panel should be 150 mm minimum. Hinges, the hinges which you see on the side of the doors uh, should be tested. Door closer on the top and uh, ideally the frame should be to the same standard as the door. Whatever standard you are designing your door material to be, the same standard the frame also to be there. Purchase together as a door set. So fire doors may be combination of materials such as glass which is used for vision panels, gypsums as an endothermic fill, fill, fill which, is, which you see on the sides. It could be of steel, it could be of timber, vermiculite, boards, aluminium, GI, all different materials, all these different materials could be used. So the door hardware includes, what all these door hardware includes is automatic closing devices or objects, ball bearing hinges, gas seals, positive latching mecha mechanisms, smoke seals. See normal seal edges of a fire usually need to have fire rated scale uh, seals which can be composed of edges. So these edges can have intermittent strip which expands when exposed to heat or it can even have a gasket to prevent the passage of smoke or it can even have a neoprene weather stripping. So these are the three materials which can be used on the edges where there is a joint and the, there is a possibility of a gap created and there is a possibility of smoke and fire entering through those small minute gaps. So to cover that these three different uh, materials could be used in the door. So the fire doors they enable buildings to compartmentalize and delay the spread of fire from one area to another. So in the planning, uh, in the earlier sessions we had discussed this compartmentalization in the planning of the buildings. So as we all discussed that if the building is uh, linear or whatever, spaces has to be compartmentalized like this. So then there is a door, fire door here, fire door here, fire door here. So the fire is at least stopped in one particular compartment. So the fire doors are provided in the compartmentalization of the planning of the building. So fire doors have a vital safety features and really can be the difference between life and death. Two of the most important functions of fire doors have are when closed they form a barrier to stop the spread of a fire, when it is open they provide a means of escape. So features of the fire doors, fire doors itself is usually made from a solid timber frame generally. So it is made from a solid timber frame but they can sometimes be covered again in fire resistant glass. This glass should be able to withstand exposure to the heat condition in a fire test for at least 60 minutes before it reaches a temperature high enough, high enough to soften it. So 60 minutes is nothing but one hour. So one hour rating it, it needs to provide. Around the edges of the door. So edges is what I meant is if we have a door, like, door frame like this. door will open and close like this. So edges is nothing but these gaps. So sometimes what they do they complete seal the whole frame or only these gaps. 
So, around the edges of the door will be the intumescent seal. So, the edges of the door, this also could be the edge of the door. So, it could be sealed with intumescent seal which is designed to expand when temperatures reaches beyond 200 degrees centigrade to seal the gaps between the door and the frame. Now, if it is closed, what happens when the intumescent paint is used here and the temperature reaches to 200 degree centigrade inside the space, then this intumescent uh, seal has a property of expanding itself. So, when it gets expanded, it seals automatically, it, this uh, gap seals automatically. So, that is about uh, intumescent seal. Similarly, we also have intumescent paint. So, intumescent paint, what is it? You can see here in this picture, um, this is a steel uh, frame or a section which is uh, you know, eye section which is painted by intumescent paint. Intumescent is a material uh, which can be available like in form of seal or paint. So, this intumescent paint is a coating that reacts to heat by swelling in a contain controlled manner to many times its original thickness. So, if, if you can see here, we have two pictures here. So, in this, it is the original picture after the painting of the intumescent paint to the eye section. And this you can see the paint is expanded the number of times than its original thickness. So, this is in case of fire. If fire, in case fire occurs in that space, still this intumescent paint is protecting. Here in the door frame we saw as a seal towards sealing the space, sealing the gaps, but here to protect the material, this is a eye section. So, it is a steel. So, instead of uh, uh, during the fire it may spoil. So, this intumescent uh, paint will protect the material to not to get affected by the fire. So, uh, producing a carbonaceous, how does it increase its thickness? It produces a carbonaceous char. This is, uh, uh, which is expanded is a carbonaceous char from formed by a large number of small bubbles that act as an insulating layer to protect the substrate. So, the inner material is intact, it is protected. So, uh, you can see the same thing on the steel section. I We have, this is the normal one, bigger image of the same thing. So, it is uh, uh, during the fire event, it has been expanded. This is how you see, if this is the steel section, the uh, intumescent paint has a character of increasing itself, uh, its thickness through the bubbles. Uh, carbonaceous bubbles. So, that bubbles are formed into thick, more thicker spaces. So, which you can see like this after it is completely burnt, but the internal surface or the internal material is still intact. So, intumescent coatings resemble ordinary paint. They can be used to protect a variety of building materials, including structural steel, concrete, wood and gypsum. So, these materials can be protected by this. However, the main purpose of these coatings is to maintain the integrity of structural components until fires are extinguished. So, if structural components get um, disturbed or if it gets deintegrated, disintegrated due to the fire, then the whole structure can collapse. So, to maintain the integrity of structural components, these intumescent paint can be used on the building uh, structural elements paint surfaces. <coughs> so, fire rated uh, intumescent paint is the most commonly used coating to protect steel against fire and acts as an insulator forming a solid char in response to heat. Intumescent paint can be applied on steel as a thin or thick film coating. Thin film fi fireproof paint materials 
that can be used for steel or water or salt based uh, and are typically applied to prevent fires in regular buildings. While thick films were originally used in hydrocarbon and offshore industries, good example being the external steel structures from skyscrapers. So, in skyscrapers, this is like a common thing which they use for steel uh, structural members. If they have used steel structural members externally, this uh, a coating or a paint is definitely used. There are different types of uh, intumescents, paints, water based and solvent based uh, intumescent paint. Water based intumescent paint or coatings are generally more eco friendly and less chemically smelling option. So, one issue with this intumescent paint is it has a smell when it expands. So, that is reduced in the water based intumescent which is eco friendly either. So, they are the least expensive and produce less odor. Solvent based intumescent is uh, usually used in semi exposed environments and are tested against weather and temperature variations. And we also have epoxy based intumescent. It is typically used in harsher environments such as offshore marine industries or the chemical industry because these coatings provide excellent hydrocarbon fire protection. Epoxy based intumescent comes in two parts which will which when combined forms a very thick durable film that insulates the steel member and it is highly resistant to corrosion. Then we have uh, fire hydrants, a fire hydrant or a fire cock. Uh, this is uh, one example typical example of how fire hydrant looks. So, it can be seen in different cities even on the street side or uh, it is seen inside the buildings or in towards the campuses uh, site uh, inside the site campus. So, likewise this is used to this is also a passive method which is used for uh, fire prevention. So, fire hydrant or a fire cock it can also be called as fire cock which is a connection point by which firefighters can tap into a water supply. It is a component of active fire protection. Now, you see this uh, this is connected below underground with the pipe water pipe is connected to this. Now, hoses can be connected to all these sites firemen can connect hoses and uh, uh, use the water to uh, diminish the fire. So, we have two types in fire hydrants, wet hydrant and dry hydrant. So, these fire hydrants there are two commonly used wet hydrant and dry. So, what is wet hydrant? It is widely used in places where there is no problem of freezing. Some cold climates this hydrants cannot be used because the water can freeze and then it might not it might end up in not working. So, in such type of uh, climates uh, fire hydrant systems the water in the main supplies and the hydrant closes to the surface. So, in cold weather condition it is susceptible for to freezing. Dry hydrant is uh, dry hydrant system stores the water in dry hydrant what happens it stores the water below ground. The earth's temperature is usually higher than the cold environment temperature in cold regions. So, the possibility of freezing can be prevented by this arrangement. So, there is a water stored below the ground. Then in the fire uh, regulations, we have certain systems, certain codes of practices to be followed. So, that is uh, a few of the uh, Indian standards are these two BIS that is Indian Bureau of Indian Standards which is issued by them uh, standards which is issued by BIS Bureau of Indian Standards and NBC National Building Code of India 1983 which was developed in 1983 there are many revisions happened to this, uh, this document either. 
right so we in india especially these two standards are used there are different standards used across the world so british standards then astm astm is nothing but american society of testing and materials so likewise different uh, standards are developed in different countries so in india regular fire services in india was established about 215 years back the service was first developed established in bombay in 1803 followed by calcutta in 1822 delhi in 1867 and madras in 1908 so these were the different uh, time period when it was developed centrally sponsored scheme on strengthening of fire and emergency services in the country has been approved by the government so in india the main objective main thing which we look upon is nbc national building code the earlier documents in the previous sessions and all which we have which has been shown in the presentation is been taken from this particular document which will be shared with you guys also so the main objective of nbc is to specify measures that will provide the degree of safety from fire which is practical and can be reasonably achieved the code insists upon compliance with minimum standards and fire safety necessary for building occupants and users so nbc covers the detailed guidelines for construction it covers how to construct a building with with uh, resisting the fire how to maintain and fire safety of the structures so this instructs us how guidelines are provided to construction uh, technology and maintenance and fire safety nbc national building code of india is published by bureau of indian standards bas is the one organization which has been which is published this nbc and it is recommendatory document it is compulsory to follow this document in designing the buildings so the guidelines were issued to the states of in states to incorporate the recommendations of national building code into their local building bylaws making the recommendations of national building code of india as mandatory requirement so they have, there is also a local building uh, bylaws which has implemented few fire uh, laws so it can also be referred and also nbc both can be referred the office also has uh, issued advisories on uh, 18th april 20, 2017 to all the state governments to incorporate and implement latest national building code of india this is the latest uh, document which can be downloaded e even so national building code of india 2016 part 4 fire and life safety so that's the latest document which can be downloaded easily from the internet and can be used for designing purposes there are other regulations which can also be followed for understanding how fire protection can be done uh, so uh, uh, for uh, for uh, bigger buildings there is a requirement of taking uh, usher approval from fire department also so it is very important to go through our national building uh, uh, code book code uh, to uh, design any particular building with respect to the fire so uh, how uh, there are different uh, uh, fire protection associations and uh, laws which we can also refer which can also be referred so nfpa is something uh, which is national fire protection association of usa they provide uh, uh, in detail like nfpa1 nfpa2 nfpa3 nfpa1 refers to fire code nfpa2 refers to hydrogen technologies code uh, nfpa12 a it refers to the standard of halen 1301 fire extinguisher systems especially fire ext extinguisher systems which is used by hal uh, which is used uh, which is using the chemical halen so for that itself there is a, a recommendation installation of sprinkler system there is a that different uh, just for installing sprinkler system they have a different codes so likewise even 
even in uh, NBC we have uh, set, uh, Indian standards we have certain systems. So this is about uh, fire and uh, national fire protection and how codes of practice can help help us. We can easily refer it can be uh, for any particular building while designing. NBC can be referred very easily, Indian standards can be referred very easily. In certain cases if required these also can be referred for the safety of the users. So now we will move on to the next part of the module file. Until now we have uh, discussed about uh, fire, mostly introduction to fire and life safety. That was the detailed discussion which we had uh, till now in the module 5. Now we will move on to the special requirements of module 5 which covers solar hot water generation, central LPG supply system, medical gases supply, storage of high speed diesel, central vacuum and waste collection. So these five items are what we are going to, uh, uh, these five things are what we are going to cover in this particular session. So let's look into solar or hot water generation. So solar hot water generation is a common uh, uh, hot water generation nowadays in all, uh, all the households and other spaces in other types of buildings. So solar water heating is a well established highly effective and pollution free process. It is a pollution free, pollution free process because we are using solar energy to generate the energy, uh, hot water. Pollution free process for heating water that can be used throughout the country. It also minimizes the consumption of fossil fuels for heating water, reduces the emission of unwanted gases. So especially in India, uh, there is a traditional way of uh, generating the hot water that is uh, by fire with wood fire and uh, other uh, ways of doing it. Uh, so to reduce that pollution and uh, emission, also to use solar which is a uh, free energy which is available. So, uh, solar hot water generation becomes a mandatory thing to utilize for producing, uh, for uh, using, generating hot water. There are lot of advantages with uh, by using the solar hot water generation. Fossil fuels pollution is one thing which can be reduced and um, Solar powered energy for uh, in this solar powered energy fossil fuels are non-renewable sources whereas solar powered energy is renewable sources. Not only do they take years to form fossil fuels does not take it is just not uh, easily we cannot easily get these fossil fuels but the rate of use is so far greater than the rate of formation. But the way we are using these fossil fuels is like so huge. Uh, than the uh, number of years it takes to form itself. So it can get exploited, exploited. it is getting exploited. So likewise uh, solar powered energy is an easy way to consume and free energy which is renewable. There is always a renewable energy, it is always a renewable energy. It's so that is one thing which we have to look into. In addition to being non-renewable, fossil fuels also produce around 21.3 billion tons of carbon dioxide each year, which is contributing to the greenhouse gases enormously. According to scientists and environmentalists, carbon dioxide is our global warming contributor that causes the average surface temperature of the earth to raise. So how we can contribute towards the uh, uh, saving of this earth. So this is one, uh, this is one slide which tells you about what the, the different energies which is provided by solar, sun. So we can get light energy, we can get heat energy. So uh, in these uh, light energy and heat energy, how can we convert that and make it usable for us? 
when we use these photovoltaic cells, PV cells which we call as, they capture the light energy and produce electricity. It can be generated, it can generate electricity easily, photovoltaic cells. So these cells can capture light energy from the sun, whereas heat energy, the heat which is produced is captured by concentrated solar power or non-concentrated solar power also. So the electricity produced by steam. Solar pole heating, solar water heating can be done for the domestic use. Now what we are looking is mostly about the solar hot water generation through the to the domestic use. So Solar water heating system is a device that uses solar energy to heat water for domestic, commercial and industrial needs. Heating of water is the most common application of solar energy in the worldwide. Among the worldwide, heating of water is the most common thing. A typical solar water heating system can save up to 1500 units of electricity every year for every 100 liters per day of solar water heating capacity. It can save electricity of 1500 units for 100 liters per day. So imagine like every year how much it can be saved. So the basic components of solar hot water generation system is, so the basic form of a solar water heating system comprises solar collectors, a storage tank, and interconnecting pipe work. The solar energy incident on the absorber panel coated with selected coating transfers the heat to the riser pipes underneath the absorber panel. This we will look into the detail. The water passing through the risers get heated up and is delivered to the storage tank. The recirculation of the same water through absorber panel in the collector raises the temperature to 80 degrees centigrade maximum in a good sunny day. The total system with solar collector, storage tank and pipeline is called solar hot water system which has solar collector, storage tank and pipeline is called solar hot water system. The water which is, uh, uh, which is passed through the solar collector which has a coating on that has uh, which has a surface coating on that captures the heat energy and makes the water heat and then it is stored into the storage tank sometimes and then let into the pipelines. So that is solar hot water system, Bro broad idea of it. There are different types which we can see in this. So this is uh, how uh, different types of uh, heat generation can, uh, solar hot water generation can happen. You can, we can heat in different ways. So. Uh, something called as thermosiphon system. This is one common system which we generally use for heating the water. That is nothing but solar heater. So uh, it is all, it can also be called as passive system or direct system or thermosiphon system. So this is this can be used for smaller applications where th up to three thousand liters capacity users may prefer thermosiphon system. In small residences and all 3000 liters is could be if sufficient like uh, one family or two family living in that houses. So 3000 liter capacity could be sufficient. So uh, it uses mostly thermosiphon system for its simplicity. When there is a variation in the temperature the thermosiphon system is like where the water moves from the lower temperature to the higher temperature. So that system is called as thermosiphon system natural uh, normal movement because of the property of the water. So that is what has been adapted in this without pump if you if it uh, can be told easily without pump to with just with the pressure of the water it can be worked. In such cases the sources of the cold water must be placed at least 7 feet above the terrace level for size up to 500 liters. For larger tank sizes, the height requirement may go up to 10 feet where solar water heater system will be installed. So this solar water heater we can see, uh, 
This is one of the direct system where we have integral collector storage. So, three parts are there in this collectors, solar collectors and storage tank and pipe network. So, likewise in this just trying to explain how the thermosiphon storage system can happen through the integral collector systems. This type of uh, solar uh, collector which has uh, pipes inside is called as integral collector storage. From there it goes to the tank and from the tank hot water is provided. So, thermo siphon system is basically it has it does it automatically moves from one point to the other point. So, this is the most widely used system configuration. In thermo siphon system cold water will flow into the system due to pressure or pressure difference and therefore, the source of the cold water must be placed at least 7 feet or more higher above the terrace level where solar water heater system will be installed. So, I just would like to explain to you in this particular system. So, this is the solar heater. In the house if you have this is the solar heater collector which uh, technology technically we can call it as collector towards the south and it receives all the heat energy from the sun and it has connected with the tank. There is a tank water tank which is provided here on top of the solar collector and from there the hot water piping is connected towards the building. So, through the pressure difference from here it transfers the water to the required points. So, in this case this cold water storage or this has to be 7 feet high if it is a smaller tank, 10 feet high for the larger tank. So, that is about uh, solar uh, thermosiphon system. In detail we can uh, see about this system in the next session. Thank you.